can continue. Okay, good morning, good evening, everyone. It's already our 10th, I think, uh, meeting on uh, uh, search engine, uh, discover, uh, knowledge discovery engine. Today, uh, finally, I hope so, uh, are we going to, um, uh, to define a clear uh, starting point for every one of us? I had already a synchronization talk with Arthur, who uh, proposed also a kind of a uh, layered structure. Uh, you, you, you may have seen that already in Slack, uh, how to combine uh, different perspective, perspectives, like database, like ontology, like search engine, like, uh, let's say, this knowledge discovery engine. And today, uh, yeah, and that's, that's the, the whole point of our meeting today. Uh, I want to make everyone uh, here, uh, everyone else, and I want, to, uh, I want to make everyone speak up uh, when uh, he or she uh, feels uncomfortable or uncertain about the direction we are going towards. So uh, the first thing is, um, actually the language i i would like to that we use uh, terms or the terminology as plain and as as simple as possible because when we start using words like pruning preprocessing or uh, filtering data or preparing data then it triggers a lot of people who don't who do not know precisely what we mean with it uh, and uh, it, it creates a lot of confusion. So uh, every time we talk about doing something about data, we need to be very precise about it so that uh, it, it doesn't uh, create any kind of fear or, uh, or doesn't make people afraid that actually we ch we, 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 we're trying to, uh, to create something, a, a kind of database or a set of data documents that are biased in any way. So uh, just let me think one person more. Uh, so yeah, I, I mean, I, I think that uh, we have a couple of persons uh, who, uh, who have been involved in, in, in the talks last time. So maybe I, I would like to ask John uh, to uh, like to clarify this, I mean, it's for, because I, 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 I read already uh, your, um, your messages, your posts on Slack, and I would like to make sure that uh, we are all on the same page, John. Uh, do you agree? I mean, like, do you see the whole point of creating data infrastructure that Slava is now doing? Yes, I've seen that for the entirety of the last 10 calls. I have agreed with that the whole time. We should have common data infrastructure, but that common data infrastructure needs to be informed by use cases. Okay, uh, Slava, it's okay. Infor like in because I'm. <coughs> Slava, are you there? Okay, could you respond to it? I mean, like it's a kind of request. If it's possible to that database uh, can be informed by user cases. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think, uh, I think it's, uh, well, it's also possible if we will get uh, good use cases, why not to try to execute. But in general, I think uh, after we'll deliver this first prototype of, of the data infrastructure, we'll get a lot of people trying to actually to find uh, answers to on research questions. So, it's kind of natural development. And uh, of course we can collect all these use cases right now from community, but what I want to see, I want actually to uh, deliver this functionality to people. And I want to see if uh, people will come with some research questions that can match actually. This is how we, we can understand uh, what they do and how they're going to use this infrastructure. So it should be not one or two, I think it should be like 100 questions. At least this is my experience, how I'm, I'm uh, working with uh, people from uh, research and uh, I'm doing that in different countries and uh, even in, di uh, in different continents. So yeah, we just, I think it's going to happen, but we'll see. 
Okay, okay. Uh, John, it's, it's, I mean, you're satisfied with this response? No, I mean, I agree that there will be at some point more use cases developed. Uh, this is, you know, an iterative model. Um, we will continue to develop things. However, we need to have some sort of user adoption early on. Uh, because unlike the situations that Salva is dealing with now, where you know the researchers are aware of this utility that they have, and maybe they have domain expertise where they're already working with ontologies and all these things, um, the people that we are working with, uh, it, with the exception of say Jeremy, Rose, Dan, uh, are not familiar with the idea of using ontologies or knowledge graphs. Um, or perhaps they don't see the benefits of this common commons data pattern. Um, and so they're going to continue doing what they do unless we reach out to them and show them how we can be useful. Okay, so, so I have a quick response to <coughs> your remark. Uh, we are working together with Brandon and uh, he's doing an amazing job on, on uh, publishing a notebook that will become kind of example how uh, we see uh, the usage of infrastructure. So at the moment, we, collect, uh, we already connected uh, Elasticsearch and MongoDB service is already up and running. It will be filled with all data uh, from Core 19 very soon. And also we have uh, Dataverse integration already. So basically, I, I can share you a notebook where you can see all steps already uh, reproducible. And uh, after we'll get like Virtuoso as knowledge graph and other things, we will be able actually to um, short for more people from with different use cases and uh, well I, I'm pretty sure it will grow naturally okay I, I will put in chat I will put one of the examples and uh, I see uh, Brandon uh, on the call so probably Brandon can uh, tell what he already did um, also but for now uh, I'm just it's just very simple example connection to Elasticsearch running in our infrastructure and also connection to uh, Dataverse. And here you can see like kind of a basic workflow, what we are going to do. And we are going to extend with more services. Like I said, it will be Mongo, Virtuoso, Neo4j, uh, all these kinds of components will be possible to connect in, in Google Collabs. And if you would like, uh, you can use your um, local uh, Python notebook, Jupyter notebook and it will become reproducible infrastructure that you can actually use for any kind of uh, use cases. Just look at the link that's provided and you will understand what I mean. So I actually agree with both of you in that um, I think it is useful for us to reach out to people that are going to be able to use this uh, other than just data scientists. And at the moment, what I'm doing is making it usable for data scientists, right? Because uh, at the moment, we don't have a UI, we don't have a, like a really nice website that uh, has graphs and, and says, what would you like to find and stuff like that? We don't have that yet. So um, I, I'm just about to publish a notebook that shows people how to use Elasticsearch. I already have uh, some of the queries written up so that you only have to change variable names and then you can find things, uh, filtering or more like this, whatever. So basically the functionality that everyone on Slack has been wanting and asking me for. Um, and but I but I do agree uh, with John that at some point we need to have a really nice friendly way of uh, for researchers to interact with this who are not familiar with data science um, and who will eventually be using this product as something that helps them with their research or whatever use case that we we've come up with in the future. Um, yeah, uh, and thank you, Slava, for your amazing work and for your support. Because without you, I would die. This is so much. Uh, it's just like so much. <laughs> Uh, guys, maybe just to like uh, to trying to sum up some uh, like some 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 uh, some objections. Uh, I have here just let me share my screen once again. I think that I shown you yet. I, I uh, yesterday wait uh, where I we are here somewhere this room. Uh, wait. So, uh, yeah, this 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 uh, kind of uh, layout of the database. It's the idea is so that we have the database, and then we have a multiple different, let's say, uh, uh, features or 
types of data we can query from those databases. So we can uh, do different types of uh, filtering. We can gra uh, grab a grasp uh, at the different types of, uh, let's say, already pre-processed data like lemmas, UMLS, etc. And we can also, uh, it's not visible here, shit. Uh, and then we have also <laughs> different levels of, of uh, let's say, different kinds of granularity. And the idea is that all those things can be enhanced depending on specific search uh, research questions. And uh, the, yeah, and, uh, and built up bigger, and that's that's the whole idea. The idea is not just to to curb the the whole uh, data uh, set to just to fit one question, uh, one research question. It's more like uh, to give a plenty of uh, different uh, types of resources or different, let's say, versions of data then we can uh, alter in between, depending on our needs. Uh, uh, Lukas, can I elaborate something? Yes. Uh, well, um, I already told a lot about Dataverse, but actually Dataverse allows um, to get data directly in, in the system from, uh, let's say, Google Clubs. So what you can do, uh, if you have a search question, you can reuse our infrastructure. You can collect some data from different locations. You can do something, some cleaning, whatever processes. And after with some provenance information, you can uh, enrich data set with uh, new data and you can push it directly to Dataverse. And your um, Jupyter, Jupyter Notebook actually will explain what you did. So you can also archive it and put in Dataverse. And other people will get the idea what actually you did from which locations and how it was done. And probably we'll get uh, also some people from libraries that can describe it nicely with metadata. So this is like common workflow how research will be executed in the future because it's not completely there. But we are together with Harvard, we are slowly coming to this point. And what I'm describing here is kind of, uh, I'm pretty sure it will be uh, like common process in, in two years already. Okay, there are, there, there are some questions to it. I mean, like, to, is it clear now uh, what we mean with database, what we mean with the, those different types of filtering or let's say sub pipelines for our data and how we see database as a kind of an initial starting point for every type of pipeline of data, of uh, every type of uh, procedure to, to, to do anything with the data? Like, it's clear or it's there are some objections? Yeah, uh, Lukash, I think like we're just agreeing on um, whether or not how we approach this, but I think there's the specifics still need to be discussed in terms of like uh, I post on the Slack, um, what filters are we gonna use? Which filter need annotations? How are we gonna do? Because I really liked what John and Jeremy and Rose is talking about, which is return on curation, right? So then we could prioritize which one do we annotate. But uh, curation, curation should be part of our workflow anyway. And I'm pretty sure we can get it integrated uh, in Jupyter Notebook, but you will not see those people that do actually annotation and curation. They will do somewhere, all these jobs somewhere in, in the background and you will just get all data that will, they'll create uh, on top of uh, your stuff. Yep, I'm, I'm talking about just the order rather because um, I think like the worry was that we'd be spreading the annotation resources thinly and not doing anything well uh, rather than one thing really well so if we could at least prioritize then um, we could kind of get the best of both worlds uh, I, I, I think that, that I think we're, we're spreading pretty thin uh, we do have you know we have multiple people working on multiple mm -hmm. things but it would be nice if we could just like really have a goal in mind for a sprint and then all try to get something that that one thing delivered on in a short period of time and then maybe build on that afterwards. Okay, I really like this one. Finally, we start getting the right terminology like sprints and like short term goals, etc. So <laughs> uh, No, I think that that I uh, Imran, I, I think that this is the idea that uh, like with uh, filtering is that filtering of the data or some kind of uh, selection 
or uh, clustering. It's something up to the researchers. That's what we, with the data infrastructure we want to provide uh, are everything that, uh, all, all kinds of metadata, all kinds of pre-processing done by Brandon, like lemmas, UMLs, everything that is generic. And ge for instance, lemmas are generic. It's like you don't have different lemmas for different types of papers. Lemma is just lemma. Uh, the, the same for UMLS because it's a, also a generic uh, vocabulary, medical vocabulary. So those Actually, things- That's not true. UMLS is very broad. The ontologies within it are very use case specific. Yes, but uh, okay, Rob, good to have you uh, here. So my question is the UMLS that uh, are used by the uh, Science Spacey uh, package, it's like we, we tagged with those UMLS, actually the whole course. It's done by Brandon, by the way. Uh, I, I might just mention sort of how that uh, how that's going, and also what I added because of uh, uh, requests by by people that work with it. So because I didn't know anything about UMLS when I started, uh, so basically what it does is it looks up in the entire UMLS database uh, using trigrams which um, which term it's most likely referring to. So like myocardial refers to heart or something like this, um, and. Previously, I was normalizing it to the first alias available in the UMLS graph. So if uh, one term like heart had multiple aliases, myocardial, cardiac, cardial, whatever else, then it would normalize to the first term, which uh, I realize now is problematic. Um, so in order to sort of mitigate that, but also to keep the text data at, uh, from blowing up in terms of dimensionality, I've uh, included a non-normalized, just the, the CUID, which is like the, the actual concept identification number for uh, all UMLS concepts identified in the text. Um, so if something, has, even if it has multiple aliases, it has a unique ID, and that unique ID is now in the UMLS ID column, and anyone who's familiar with that should be able to use that column uh, to work with that data. I, I uh, have something else, but. There's a and, um, right, a little bit of an input from our side because we, we are kind of investigating the same thing, okay? <clears throat> there is, we had an assumption that abbreviation there are by default uh, in ULMS. Well, that's not the case. And when I started to calculate uh, keyword frequency that we kind of calculated versus actual uh, word frequency, including abbreviations, it didn't match. Now the problem is in a paper you have a mention of the full term probably one times or two, then you have an explanation of abbreviation, and then the rest of the paper uses abbreviation. Yeah, one of the issues that we were investigating was whether or not uh, we had to feed the entire text to the model for it to understand that uh, all of the acronyms refer back to the first mention of it. Um, because if we just feed it one sentence at a time, you only have the acronym and not the actual term. So I think that it's not looking up the acronyms. I think that it's leaving them unless I feed it the full text of the entire document. Um, and in order to build that properly back into the pipeline is going to take a while. Uh, might be by, by, it's, it's, by it's, our uh, discovery. But... Right. Okay. I'm sorry. Am I go yeah. ahead? Okay. Uh, we've discovered that uh, actually most likely, and I will confirm that probably in a few days from now, a combination of correct and grams plus expected term. Uh, plus frequency, they do give you relevancy per intention of search. And the, this, uh, this methodology increases the, preci the precision of intended search by much. Okay. Perfect. Um, so if anyone who's working with this data uh, needs it to be processed in a different way, please do let me know. Like if something is coming out totally weird, I want to know about it um, because I'm just trying to handle the processing. Uh, if something needs to be changed, definitely let me know because I'm, I'm willing to uh, do some coding for that. Okay. And, uh, I just want to add to this. Uh, all this process actually is research itself. 
so uh, I think Brandon, uh, if you if you can, can publish uh, your notebook, and other people can take a look, they can change something, and uh, probably we'll, we'll, we we can get better results after some time. Uh, it, it is published. It's been published since week one, but I don't know if people are really willing to look through the several hundred. No, lines no, 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 no. <laughs> it's it's not on GitHub. It's it's in Dataverse. It should be on Dataverse. Oh, I see what you mean. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the thing is, I think like I was all like constantly monitoring the common repo, right? And I saw all of the edit code by you, Brandon. It just, uh, right now, this is actually the next step for in terms of evolution of, of our group, for our research group, is essentially to start iterating on top of all of that, you know, code base. And again, I don't think that you should be the guy to do all of these different like use cases. This is essentially, here is the seed of our pipeline. And now all of the people within this channel, for example, just fork it, iterate on top of it. All of that is, we already have an infrastructure ready to consume all of this and produce results. And then we have data in, we create all of these different data collections. Dataverse is perfect to handle, you know, kind of like those data collections, annotate them with metadata, et cetera, et cetera. Boom, now we just get enriched like this expanded universe of data, Dataverse. And I think at that point, we will be at this point that we're saying, oh, you know what, infrastructure level is covered. Let's move on to the next, uh, you know, like in that general agenda that was just posted. Yeah, and uh, I remember Brendan said something that this is only for data scientists, but the way how I see it, uh, we can construct the groups, like medical experts can, can come together with people from data science and they can work together because they can share links like Google Collabs. It's, they can make comments, they can do some collaborative work. And I really believe that they can create something new together. Okay, so just uh, to uh, rec like to, to, just to sum up on uh, UMA, UMLS uh, terms. So it's something that uh, should be also be part of this, this basic pipeline, but at now as, if I am uh, understood uh, you correctly, Brandon, it's like not 100% clear or sure if it works or not, giving a single sentence. We can be relatively certain that it's working well, but it's not working perfectly, as with any natural language okay. processing. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, just because there was, uh, Ross, if you could comment on that, uh, because I want to be sure that uh, we are on the same page once again. So honestly, I have to go back to UMLS. I was just trying to do that right now. I, okay. Jeremy, do you know if your stuff is covered with those ontologies that are included? I think it refers specifically to clinical. Um, so the data set uh, that would most be, be most useful, I think, is actually in Pathway Commons, which is um, already in Biopax form, which is an RDF, it's actually OWL. And so it's got its own ontology. And so that, that should be able to be uploaded into, into uh, Virtuoso. Is that what you were asking, uh, Rose? No, I'm asking you questions. So what Brandon is doing with UMLS, assuming yeah. that all the named entities, are your named entities in there? Because I think that's based on SNOMED and Loink, very clinical concepts. I don't know if your concepts are in there or not. I see, I see. Um, that's a good question. So we, we can take that offline. I, I, I don't well, no, know. No. Uh, I do want to, I'm sorry to interject. So for Snowbin and everything is besides UMLS, UMLS is a, just as a collection of ontologies. And so the CUID, the concept ID does map to other uh, dictionaries. Um, that just requires a different package. Um, but uh, it should map to other like either pathways or uh, Snowbin or Loink. Yeah, sorry, I should have mentioned that it actually it does include like 40 gigabytes of, of uh, like databases from different uh, yeah. ontologies. So it's like proteins, it's yeah. types of tests, I, it's basically everything. Yeah, I can send you a link if you want to message me uh, about the full list of all dictionaries that it does link to. Um, it yeah, it's not usually accessible, but um, it does have a pretty broad um, uh, scope. Okay, okay. So I think that we, we can we can have this discussion on on uh, UMLS later on. Just like my uh, intention uh, would be that, uh, for instance, uh, those terms, medical terms, UMLS terms, are uh, delivered for all 
papers. So that it's like, it's a part of this common infrastructure, like lemmas, like uh, entity recognition, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and so that uh, everyone can collaborate it on it. And that's, that's the like initial point uh, for, for, for Slava's work. Okay, so uh, the, I think that we are in somehow over, I mean, like we know where we are with the database and what's the, what is the idea of, let's say, building the next puzzles or next, uh, next pieces of, 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 of Lego uh, in, in this pipeline. Uh, there are some questions on that or other questions. Is, is the next step clear for yeah. everyone in terms of what we need to do? Yeah, next step. That, I think I'm a bit confused myself. Yeah, I, next step uh, would be, it was my question to um, to Slava. Slava, you mentioned on, on Slack that the uh, common database is not ready yet. And uh, my question is, uh, uh, what do you need to, uh, to, make it, uh, to, to make it happen? Well, it's not only a common database, but it's a pipeline itself is not completely ready. And what I want to achieve right now, uh, I, I want to build a kind of uh, Docker with Jupyter Notebook that will be uh, suitable for any kind of tasks as is. So after you will get uh, some uh, page where you, you, you can download uh, just package and after this package will be installed and after you will execute it uh, it will download all data sets that you need to work on and uh, it will connect to all services that we are actually providing you will be able to uh, run all the experiments uh, that uh, we already collected in our infrastructure so basically you should be able to reproduce all the results from all tasks that uh, we already uh, published on, on Kaggle and I'm pretty sure that people can learn quickly from what we did in the past and they can create something new. And this part currently is missing, so it's not there. However, I'm already working on it and I think like probably next week I can deliver like first uh, version of uh, this infrastructure. Okay, so. Uh... Can, can I ask a, a clarifying question actually? So what Arthur had presented was sort of splitting out ontology, discovery engine, there, there were all different pieces. There was the underlying data, and then there were specialties on top of that, where we would add the ontology engine, we would add the, um, the UX for want of a better word. The way it's being described right now, it's sounding like that's all being linked together. Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. This is uh, actually what, what the infrastructure is, a uh, set of services that actually can work in, in different pipelines and you'll be able to construct different pipeline according to your research question. If you don't need knowledge graph, okay, you can just use Elastic to do some uh, uh, exploration of uh, collections that we already have. Yes, because like uh, it's. I think that in the in that uh, Rose in in the conversation with with our author, uh, Arthur today, we already may. Uh, I think we, we chance to to make it clear that actually database is something like the basic, the most primordial part of it, on which we can build up other parts independently or dependently, depending on on our needs, and that uh, the whole idea is that we all function in the same uh, environment so that we don't have uh, three different tasks group and three or four different, uh, let's say, pipelines being completely independent. I guess what I'm struggling with a little bit, when yeah. I look at an application that's called <coughs> like Jeremy, where we're gonna need to add additional pieces in there, it sounds like what what Slava is talking about is sort of a they select the technologies that will be used. They provide them all within the infrastructure. They will do all of the curation of the metadata. And I, I get no, I no, 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 no. You don't get it. Okay, so uh, we have DataVerse, and DataVerse actually was developed for curation of metadata. 
on top of any data set and any data you are processing. And it's just beautiful tool. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar. Uh, if you I looked already... at your, yeah, I looked yeah. at your presentation. Yeah. Okay, good. So, so you already know more or less how to use it. And uh, what we need is just a basic librarian uh, with some domain knowledge or a librarian that can ask expert about uh, some metadata fields, how to fill it. And uh, these processes can, uh, can, can be done completely independent from data uh, processing, actually. Yeah, I, I wanted to uh, jump in, in here <coughs> and quickly say that even though the latest diagram that I drafted looks linear, and there is a concern from people like John or Bannock that it's a waterfall, I want to encourage everyone not to think that it's waterfall, but uh, to imagine that it's possible to work on all of these pieces in parallel with the assumption that there is an interface level, a layer to interact between these uh, pieces. So kind of abstracting away from what's happening inside and imagining that there is this you know, magical something interface from the data infrastructure that allows us to you know, pull uh, needed data or you know, the interface from <coughs> ontology engine to pull all the relevant ontologies for the AI literature review tool. So we have to yet define those interfaces but I think that's, that's probably a good mental construct, the interface. And even if you go deep into like virology, the way that virus uh, actually binds to receptors is the same way. Like the, the spike protein, the, the same interface layers. This, the virus doesn't care what's inside the cell. It doesn't care what kind of things are happening there. It just finds a way to interact with it. Hope so that makes sense. Yeah, can, Jeremy has sort of texted something on the side that I think is really important and it highlights part of what we're concerned about. So let's... Well, yeah. So there, I think there's two concerns, right? One, one concern is, do we have enough data in data commons to actually be able to do the things that we want to do? And I think that that's an easier problem to solve because I, I can certainly point Slava to the data sets that I would want to get into data commons and it's already in the format that he can just ingest. So that's... That's, that's a smaller problem. The, the larger problem, I think, is, all right, how do we, uh, from this kind of data commons, create more structured, um, push-based kind of, you know, uh, how do we get, how do we get, you know, it, it's, it, the problem is that when you have a big data commons, it's really noisy, and uh, it might be nicer to start with something that's really clean and structured. And, and then kind of just slowly build from that. Now, I think the idea is that if all of the data that you would eventually want to get in, uh, into this more structured format comes from the data commons, then uh, you know, it will kind of just happen naturally. But um, there's an argument for just starting really clean as well, I think, especially if you have a very, uh, a very clear use case and you just want to focus on that. Yeah, but, but you see, we have almost 1,000 people and I think like half, can do something with data. So they can easily help us with harmonization and standardization based on uh, requirements of uh, actually medical experts, right? So I don't see uh, this problem, um, well, it's just a matter of time after people will, will introduce some pipeline to do something with data. And this pipeline will be reproducible because it's also Jupyter Notebook. You can put it next to your data set, so there's original data, and there is harmonized data set and there is notebook that actually produces that. And after cool. you will get second version of data set, original data set, you can just repeat it again and you will get, you'll produce new data in, in format actually you would like to get. It's just simple. Cool. All right. I mean, I'm certainly, I'm certainly, uh, actually, I, and I have not had a chance to take a look at your presentation yet. So I think uh, once, I, once I do that, then I'll, a lot of the uh, questions that I have might be answered. Um, is there a link to it or someone, something that I can check out? Yeah, there is a link on the Slack. Somewhere. <laughs> Somewhere. So I'm, I'm going to jump in again. Yes, because sure. I, what, I, what I'm seeing from, from the comments is that the things that Jeremy wants to use are not included in UMLS, which then means our named entity recognition is not going to include those concepts. And everything downstream of that then is filtered based on that. And so the way you're creating the <coughs> metadata, which we want to make decisions about, 
we're not capturing it. Is, isn't it just a matter of Jeremy telling us what to include in the data verse? Well, I, I mean, I think that the problem is that right now what's happening is the infrastructure is being created with these things, and if we don't include conversation about the use cases, oh, okay. it's something I, well, that you well, I get your point. Let, I think that I see the point. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I think the point that actually in the uh, database, you will have also the raw data or the basic version of the data, the, the most exactly. original one. So when you say, okay, UMLS uh, provided by Brandon, it's not necessarily the thing I want. I take this raw, basic, original data and I do with it whatever I want. However, I mean, with new type of pipeline, etc. So imagine that the database uh, being built by, by, by uh, Slava is something like GitHub, but for the data. The same thing we have in GitHub that we have different versions of the same code. And when we, after a couple of days, we say, okay, actually this, this version of our code doesn't provide things we want and we need to go back to a couple of days ago we do it and we work with a with a new branch of our code and in the same uh, way uh, we work the database of uh, of slava it's a kind of we, we, uh, how how call it how, how do you call it it's a dataverse or data hub or something uh, like that lucas i can uh, elaborate a little bit about that because uh, i thought quite a lot how to organize it. So uh, basically we have two different databases. First database is read only, and this is our source. This is where you can find all original data about what Lucas just said. And second database is user specific. It's your own like working place where you can uh, do things and data you can store in our infrastructure. And you will be able to, after you put in Dataverse, you will be able to reproduce experiment or you, uh, uh, just enrich with some new information you would like to have and you will get completely new uh, data but running in your infrastructure but derived from our original data set. Is it clear? So if I can step in here. Sure. I'm just going to point out that you know right now it's the case that for Brandon processing the entire data set is something like 30 hours. What we're proposing here is that perhaps the data infrastructure team should be the ones who do some of this initial pre-processing and make several different products. Like here's it processed with UMLS. Here's it processed with different subsets of UMLS. Here's it processed with the ontologies that Jeremy needs so that this becomes useful to the researcher who needs that different form of the raw data set, but we can't expect that they will be the ones to do that initially until we show them that it is going to be useful. No, no, no. Brandon it's, it's, is our infrastructure guy. I, uh, I'm kind <laughs> of infrastructure guy, but if I no, can, no, can I, can really I make like one comment, of sorry. <laughs> No, guys, so, uh, I, have, I have very clear vision uh, about this. So um, I have some experience with notebooks and uh, I have so also I'm working with R&D guys that not producing uh, production pipelines. So what we can do, if we'll see something useful, we can just put it in production in our own infrastructure. You don't need to run all these uh, conversion steps on your own. We can do this in Google Cloud in scalable way. Yeah. By, by that's what I'm suggesting that we do. And in order to find out the things that are useful, what we need to do is go out and talk to the people who are already trying to build these pipelines, figure out how to generalize them and make them production ready. Yeah, yeah but we'll, we'll get but probably 1,000 Jupyter notebooks after some, <laughs> some time. It's, it's a so balance. We can build it. yeah. <coughs> it's a balance of the timing and the, the progress that we have. So obviously, like there is no right answer, right or wrong answer here. It's just a matter of timing and catching up to the perfect time, from my um, perspective. Definitely, I agree with Artur. Um, and and I just wanted to update about the thirty hours thing. So, uh, with previous iterations of the data set and with adding more fields and stuff, like that's the stuff that really takes a lot of time. Um, but now we should be to a point where we we I don't I can't see 
many more things being added to where I need to re redo it every single week, which is really nice. I only need to process the new every 5,000 documents or something. Uh, because we like version seven brought language translation, version eight had a completely revamped UMLS, uh, the next one had different uh, lemmas or whatever. Um, and now I think that we've gotten to a stable, what I would call a text cleaning pre-processing step that is the basis for whatever other people want to do. So if they want to add like SNOMED or something, then they don't need to uh, completely process the entire data set. They just need to run it over each one of the sentences and, and extract one piece of information. Um, and to Rose's point, um, I, I, try, I knew that there was a limitation on UMLS and I, I wasn't sure how big that limitation was. So with the other named entity recognition models, because I ran five over the data set, um, each one of the additional named entity recognition models are statistically based. So they look at the part of speech of the word instead of what it actually represents. And if it's likely statistically to be a named entity, then it's put into a different column. And then it uh, also tries to put that in the particular kind of named entity, so like DNA, cell structure, protein, whatever else. It, the, the drawback is that that's not linked to less. So um, we have, I'm pretty certain that we have all of the named entities, but you would need to aggregate all of the 30 different types into one if you want to do something like that. Um, and adding information from SNOMED and all these other things that Jeremy wants to use, I, like that's a great idea. Um, I just need a little bit of help figuring out how to do that. Um, guys, um, sorry. yeah, sorry, go ahead, Christine. I just wanna add something from our uh, perspective from the tax team. So like, for example, if we wanna, um, Build a pipeline, modifying uh, Brandon already what Brandon already created, uh, but I think we still need a little help on, like we're not exactly we don't exactly know what like ontology for the or energy that we we actually need for our tasks. Uh, and if lo those things, or it would be uh, helpful to have um, someone that we can consult with to get to help us build this pipeline up for ourselves. Yeah, that's a really good point. Usually, I, like when people ask for additional information from the text, it's stuff that I never would have thought of, um, engrams and, and all this other stuff that generally I didn't know that doctors wanted or that researchers needed. But um, yeah. So um, since there is so many um, use cases, right? And we're kind of like, I think what like Rose was saying was that like you know the overlap because we have a general use case with using UMLS, but in the case that we, for example, for Jeremy's work, um, there's not as much overlap. I think um, because there's so much stuff we're trying to do, we should really just try to prioritize because there's a clear vision for what Jeremy wants as a result. And there's an, uh, another clear vision from Slava about what we want a general infrastructure to look like, right? So I think we could actually tackle both of these as long as we just prioritize our time. But I think it's like, all of this is very clear. Like it just, Slava describes everything from the end of, you know, beginning of it, right? But what, for example, I have a sense that what Rose is speaking about is like this, where it all ends, right? Like, is it correct, Rose? You see in this dug of computation yourself or Jeremy is just end of that graph of that like linear path that we're building. I guess that's still what I'm trying to understand. It sounds mm -hmm. like what you're doing is kind of curating an end to end and saying what the tools are that are going to go in there. Yeah. And okay. I think no doubt Brandon has done a great job with what he has, but th there's a lot of expertise that goes into deciding what ontologies you're going to use yeah. and what those ontologies actually mean. There's a ton of semantics associated with that. And I mm -hmm. think that by just assuming that if you have the UMLS and pop it in there you're going to get what you want out of the other side it's not it's not mm -hmm. it's not reality and yeah. there are people like us who use ontologies and who sort of develop these pipelines and i think that there are also researchers then who don't do that and that's mm -hmm. that's the service you're providing to them you're trying to abstract that for them a little so mm -hmm. by okay. by asking them do I have the right ontologies for you? Mm -hmm. They're not going to know that. They're not. They're like, okay. what are you talking about? I want to I know about. I, mm -hmm. 
so Rose, I think I get where the disconnect is. For example, like again, we who are kind of from the Slava end of building this stuff, like software engineers, we don't see, for example, like what use cases Jeremy and you're proposing as end goal. We see this as piece of all of this deck of computation. So we have all of these branches in different use cases. We just build an infrastructure so we could branch effectively, etc. And that's where the disconnect is. Everything we do on infrastructure end will, in, like, there won't be point what we're limiting in terms of what you wanted to do. In fact, it's the opposite. We're listening to what you need, right? And trying to build infrastructure so we'll be able to branch into that, you know, like a pipeline of computation in our DAG, like the record that's the graph of computation. So we don't see all of the use cases we're talking about as this end goal where this somebody mentioned waterfall of some sort. Again, this is not how we do this. Everything is like this, uh, just again, movement from one end of like again raw data, then we refine it, improve it, etc. But refinement, it doesn't mean that this refinement is for every pipeline like this. It's actually, again, what Lucas mentioned regarding this is GitHub, right? So uh, I don't think you should be worrying about like this much, like what we're discussing in terms of filtration, etc. Because again, in no, no, no shape or form, we're going to limit the ability later. In fact, I like that today we had this conversation essentially, okay, Brandon did this kind of like generic uh, approach like indexing or enriching with uh, UMLS thing, right? And you proposed essentially what I was talking regarding data collections and filtering them in them. It's, we're talking about the same stuff. It just, for whatever reason, disconnect happened you know, on this form of like where we see ourselves in this whole, you know, operation. And that's the thing. Rose, you, Jeremy, use cases, Christine's team ties, or Maya's task risking, they are not the end of the, like, they're not at the exit of one exit of this pipeline. They are part of this whole deck. Something is in parallel, something is overlapping, etc. At least that's how I see it. Does it make sense? And, uh, I can elaborate about, uh, let's say, new ontology support. And I know you are, you are really, uh, um, yeah, <laughs> you're a little, a little bit concerned about us uh, uh, able to support uh, new hold on. but John, yeah. are you still on, on the call? Uh, so I feel like we just lost John and he said, I can't deal with the boys club anymore. Good luck. Um, okay. I mean, he's not on the call anymore, right? Yeah. No, he's done. Well, okay, let's let's discuss it sometime later. Well, uh, Slava, please proceed. Yeah, so, so what, what actually I wanted to say, uh, uh, new ontology can be also uh, added in, into our infrastructure with Dataverse. So if you have file, uh, it can be any format and you can upload to Dataverse and after you can get it back in, in your Twitter notebook and you can create process to enrich and uh, yeah, to add all these um, entities uh, to new collection and we can run it in production. So this is a way how you can actually link new things to uh, what you, you want to achieve. And also the same for control vocabularies, by the way. Rose? I, I feel like we keep having the same conversations over and over again. It doesn't okay. feel like that. It feels like what you're giving us is a pipeline and you're telling us that you guys will build the various people <laughs> of the pipeline, but we have different tools that we might want to put into the, the pipeline. No, and you can. John has, can, can I finish? Yeah. John has presented an architecture where we start to split it out and specialize a little bit so that we can leverage some of the stuff in the metadata. And, and please start working on that. Like th that's the missing piece of miscommunication that we're kind of failing to uh, converge to. We want you to do that. And we're just failing to find common speech to explain that, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah to I, I think that you presented this point. morning. Okay. Go ahead. Amy. Sorry, uh, Rose, I, was, I was just wanted to say that, you know, um, I understand what uh, John's frustration that, you know, this discussion has been going on for a while. 
uh, we just really need to start listing out things, right? Like in terms of, and especially I, I see two conflicting visions, but really we can work on them both at the same time. We just have to, you know, because, you know, Jeremy's use case is so clear. And I really think we could really start with that. And Slava's infrastructure builds out for everyone else. We can do both. We just need to start listing it out and documenting it and then looking at how can we break it down. Agree. Uh, yeah. So let's, let's just agree that we're failing to communicate the same thing. Let's, uh, you know, probably figure out a way <coughs> to work together. And uh, also, Rose, please give us some, you know, leap of faith in terms of, you know, the fact that we want to, to have you help us figure this out. It's just a question of timing and us catching up to, to what you want to do. Does it make sense? That we have we have a problem with communication. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the best thing that comes out of this call. Like, yeah, I, let's just agree. A problem with miscommunication, and I think maybe two two different visions, two slightly yeah. different visions. Yeah. And I that's okay. Two, you know, yeah. that's the nature of this organization, and we're just going to have to to go through this organically. <coughs> uh, okay, so. Uh, can we uh, can we uh, conclude this session? I mean, like we have already reached some point. I mean, where we start slowly see. I mean, like we have uh, some bigger picture and we we understand uh, each other a bit better than yesterday or two days ago. So uh, I'm going to put everything on uh, YouTube, just in the case mm -hmm. for all other folks. And uh, yeah, mm, I hope see you uh, next time, uh, all of you. <laughs> all right, mm -hmm. goodbye, the boys club. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. All right, guys, take care. Girls here too. Okay, bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs>